In this tutorial, we'll take a closer look at image mapping, and in particular, we'll compare the difference between vector-based images and raster-based images. I'm sure you've seen plenty of programs, some say raster-based, and some are vector paint programs, things of that nature. And I'll show you really how they differ and what to avoid for uh, some of your applications. So all I have in here is are this same stage lighting scene that we had done in a previous tutorial, but I added this uh, disk to the scene and I mapped room not bad it's this guy here to the scene yep and I mapped the uh, this image onto it let's see if we can look at it from above real quick all right and it's moderately decent resolution this wasn't uh, I think this might be a 720 image resolution is approximately what it came out to on this and and it works fine for most cases, but if you, you know, a lot of times you get up on textures really close, they start to get fuzzy, you know, like that, if you're zooming through a scene. And in this case, this this image back here was just an image map, and it's uh, this was just a screen captured resolution, and it's not bad, but they're both raster images at this point, except this one here can can be regenerated as a higher resolution image because it's done in a vector way and I'll show you what I mean. I'll switch over to another program here real quick and in here this is this um, tech math instructor program that I use to generate images and so what it is not only you can either paint with it or you know in most like here's a let me give find a color in here let's get a color let's say 255 for red and green so you can use it as a paint program and this is generating you know a raster image essentially it's just drawing the pixels to the screen but and it's but if you have an image like that you zoom in on it you've seen it before they get all blocky looking so I typically don't use these kind of images I use that image you saw in here I generated in this program and I do that by generating it with let's clear this canvas and draw a grid and you do it with commands and this is essentially what vector imaging is all about it's a command like I might come in here and say clear canvas alright and then let's say I want to use color 0 and then draw ellipse like this and let's see what happens when I run this script so it draws it to this particular location right here let's say instead I want to do something else. I'll set the program to polar coordinates. And then I'll set the polar angle at say 0, 0.0 and then I'll draw the ellipse. And now the notice it's 0 and it has a default radial distance. Here's the origin of 0, a default radial distance of 1. If I wanted to change that radial distance I could come in here and change radial distance to 2.0 and I run the script again and it sets it out here and then uh, maybe I come over here and call method 2 oh, 20 times and within method 2 here I say draw ellipse and I increase the polar angle say 10 degrees and then I return to the previous call back in method one. So now let's run it. So now it runs the circles around here like this. You can change the colors, change anything. But basically, and then what you do is you end up saving this like this. Well, sometimes in a vector drawing program, when you're drawing like this here, what it's doing, it's actually saving each one of those commands like that. And then if you want to zoom in on the image at another time, it, it it can zoom in and then it can scale it up and draw it at a higher resolution. So it's basically saving commands exactly like this versus in a paint program you're not saving commands you're just painting to the screen and the only thing you're saving is your pixel data as a raster image. In this case when you have things like this it's stored basically as a vector image. And the, the value of this is this is scalable even though I'm only working on a really small part of the image in here I can open up another program that's 
much much greater resolution and run this exact same script on it and then I generate a very high resolution image map and that'd be a vector based image map to use in your program so it's really useful because then you can scale it up to you know as the computers get faster and your resolution gets better then your image map gets better and if you start in the old days and you're working with an old low resolution raster image you know and the technology gets ahead of you then your old images can be really bad so if you can if you're only using raster images try and use a higher start with a real high resolution image map for starters and you can always scrunch it down to a smaller image for the time being so I just wanted to point that tip out for those of you who didn't know because some of you are, might be new to computer graphics right okay and so that's what I had done in here this was a vector based image that I did with that same type of scripting that I was just showing you moments ago and then I brought it in and I mapped it to this was a top of a cylinder that I mapped it to and I have a couple of tutorials on uh, image mapping if you're not familiar with image mapping and um, okay well that's it for this quick tutorial and I'll see you in the next lesson